Join the Greater Refuge Temple every Sunday morning for Sunday morning worship. This world will not end by COVID-19. I wish I had a church in here. Don't let anyone cause you to lose faith in God. And from the waters, He lifted me. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. You would have been in a nut house someplace trying to keep up with that. Thank God you got a free in the Holy Spirit, enjoying the greatest freedom of all. The Lord has been good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the doors that God closed just as well as the doors that God has opened. 11 a.m. Streaming live from Facebook. Catch us on YouTube, greaterrefugetemple.org. Oh, God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, that same God who is immutable, unchangeable. He cannot change. Heard the word of the prophet, and the fire of God fell. There's some of us in here that realize that if it had not been, Remember, those who pray can expect a miracle. Bishop Charles E. Wright, Senior Pastor. Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., Assistant Pastor. You are tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. Precious, mighty 
in the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous running into the day. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We lift you up. Because, oh Lord, you've been good to us. You've been good to us. Mother, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will be reading, hallelujah, uh, 1 Samuel, starting at the first verse, in Jesus' name. Now there was a certain man of Ramathan, Zoba, hallelujah, Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoshaphat. Roham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tahu, hallelujah, the son of Zuth, and an Ephraim. And he had two wives, and the, and the one was Hannah, and the name, and pardon me, hallelujah, and the name of, uh, of the other was Pen Penua, hallelujah. And Penua had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Praise God. And I'm skipping a little bit. And when the time, verse 4, was that Elkanah offered, he, he gave to Penua, hallelujah, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, hallelujah, portions. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, hallelujah, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Praise God. Hallelujah. And as he did so yearly, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? Why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee? Then ten sons. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest had sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness and prayed unto the Lord. Praise God. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, hallelujah, and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, hallelujah, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall, there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying, praise God, before the Lord, that Eli mocked his mouth, her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, how long wilt thou be drunken? 
put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, hallelujah, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit, hallelujah, I've drunk neither wine nor strong drink, hallelujah, 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 but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not mine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the, the woman went away and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Praise God. Now, what, um, um, verse 20. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about, after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, hallelujah, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord, and the word, hallelujah, of the Lord is blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for the word, and we thank God for our prayer. Both of them we need. At this time, we'll call on our praise team to take us further in this period of worship in Jesus' name. Our praise team.
says, Be unto the King of Kings. Why all praises be unto the King of Kings? Because He is wonderful. How many know that God is wonderful? He has been so good to you. That's why you are here this morning. Thank and praise God because He is wonderful. Thank you, praise team. They are singing like they have a full choir, Lord. All you have to do is give God something to bless, and he will bless. Thank you, Dr. McCower, Brother Raph. At this time, we will call on missionary Carla Dickerson. She will come and give us a tribute to mothers. Missionary Carla Dickerson. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Will all the mothers, stepmothers, foster mothers, godmothers, and any other who is in a, mother, a motherly role please stand? On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Charles E. Wright Sr., our assistant pastor, William Wilkins Jr., the ministerial staff, the missionary board, and the entire Greater Refuge Temple Church family. We would like to salute you on this Mother's Day. Proverbs 31 and 26 reads, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. I would also like to read to you a poem written by my son, Brother Kevin Dickinson Jr. on today to all the mothers. It is entitled, A Mother's Love. Carriers of a fetus, loving and caring for you, months while God's image of you was being completed. A connection that is hard to explain. She senses your joy and when you're in pain. No matter how old you are, her love for you remains the same. Held your hand while you learned how to walk knew what you were saying before you were able to talk, picked you up in times where you felt you might fall short. After she carried you, she showed you how to carry yourself. Held, head held high, strong in the Lord, with a presence that is able to be felt. Through life situations, she helped lessen the complications. She provides the best life for her child through hard work and dedication. She tells you right from wrong by process of elimination. She steers you the right way so you were not led into immature temptations. Express the importance of prayer through trials and tribulations. Trained up a child and from faith they shall never depart. Principles to stand on and to keep in our hearts. A mother's love latches onto you and is as sweet as a dove. On this day, mothers, we say happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day. You deserve it. God bless you. Thank you, Missionary Carla Dickinson. And thank you, Kevin Jr., for that beautiful poem. It has blessed us this morning. In Jesus' name, God bless you. At this time, we will call on our missionary president, Missionary Janice Johnson, to take us further in the offering period in Jesus' name. Our missionary president, Missionary Janice Johnson. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, that's because I said so. But let's praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has 
has made and we are we are mandated to rejoice and be glad in it God is a great God and he's greatly to be praised he has brought us another Mother's Day and we are grateful to God for his mercy and his glorious grace towards us so let's one more time let's praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody glory be to God glory be to God glory be to God for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised hallelujah hallelujah we bless the name of Jesus praise God truly we give honor to the spirit of the Lord protocol has already been established we thank our dear mother for our, our mother right for leading us beautifully so far in our service we thank God for our pastor our assistant pastor and all those to whom honor is due my job is not she should not be a difficult job and that is for the lifting of the offering we're gonna lift the offering it's offering time saints it's offering time saints it is offering time God has blessed us one more time to come into his house and we are going to give him what is his he has blessed us to work for the life for the past week or or the period of time that we have been working and those of us those of us who are retired he has blessed us with even though we have fixed income but the key word there is that we still have income all right it may be fixed but it's still income so we're going to give God what is his. He has, he has requested us to give one-tenth of our, of our earnings in tithes. And here at the Greater Refuge Temple, we are requested to give a $20 a month offering. And we are asking all those who will to please let us be obedient to, to, to our instructions by giving into the house of the Lord. The tithes are not ours. That money does not belong to us. And if you spend it, you would, not, you would not appreciate what it is spent for because it is not yours. Uncle Sam does not trust us. He takes his taxes out first. But God has given us the privilege to, to bring our tithes and our offerings into his, into, his, into his house. So let us with joyfulness and a joyful heart, we're going to give unto the house of the Lord today. And today is Mother's Day. Some of us have our mothers with us and we thank God for our mothers. Mothers are special. Some of us, our mothers are gone, but we thank God for the memory of our mothers. And at this time, if you want to give a special offering in honor of your mother, you may do so. If your mother has meant something special to you, whether she is with us or whether she's gone, you may be a blessing to the house of the Lord in honor of your mother. At Refuge Temple here, we have three ways of giving. We, we can give, those of us who are here can give in person. The ushers and the, and the deacons will be, will be coming around after a while so that they can collect the offerings that you'll be giving in person. You can also give by sending your offering through the mail. And through the mail, our mailing address is the Greater Refuge Temple, 2081 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. And that's New York, New York with the zip code 10027. And also you may give via the Givelify app. And that is those who are tech savvy. You can get your, get, get your, your, your cell phones and your devices. And the Givelify app, find the Greater Refuge Temple. You'll find a picture of our church and our pastor. And you will be in the right place to, to do your giving. But it is a blessing to give in the house of the Lord. Am I right, saints? Am I saying anything that makes sense? All right. So at this time, we're going to be giving a cheerful giver. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. So we will be giving in the house of the Lord. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I'll say it again. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And there is a blessing in giving in the house of the Lord. So at this time, with your offerings in your hand, let us bow our head as we consecrate the offering in Jesus' name. All head 
bowed and all eyes are closed as we offer our sacrifices of, of thanksgiving in our monetary giving towards the Lord. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for the privilege that you have given us one more time to be in thy house. We thank you, O oh God, for the week's journey. We thank you, O oh God, for the blessings that you have brought us into the house one more time. And we are grateful to you, O oh God. And we pray that you will bless our offering as we offer it back to you. You have given it to us, and we're going to offer it back to you with thanksgiving. Bless, O oh God, the hands that give. And those who do not have the, to give at this time, we pray that you're going to bless them in their storehouses, that they may, will be able to share in the work of the Lord at an, at an appointed time. Bless us all and make us a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. At this time, our ushers will serve you as we give in the house of the Lord. for your giving and may the Lord bless you abundantly as you have given to the work of the Lord. At this time we will read into your hearing the announcements for today Sunday May the 14th 2023. The Church of Christ Bible Institute quarterly invites you to their 95th virtual commencement exercise on next Sunday May the 21st at 5 p.m. At, at what time is it, is it going to be? At what time is, it, is it our commencement exercise? 5 p.m. And it's going to be a virtual commencement exercise. 
So one and all, please join in celebrating our students and their scholastic achievements via YouTube, Facebook, and the CCBI, or via website, the website, which is www.ccbinyc.org. Please let us fellowship and, and congratulate those who have made special achievements in studying the Word of God through the Church of Christ Bible Institute. Also on the Greater Refuge Temple Youth Department invites you to their Sunday morning youth worship service next Sunday at, uh, that's May the 21st at 11 a.m. At 11 a.m. next Sunday is going to be youth service. So all is invited to attend this powerful worship and a dynamic word will be coming from our own, very own Church of our Lord Jesus Christ pastor, Pastor Rayshon Staley. Pastor Rayshon Staley is going to be the guest speaker next Sunday. So please come and bring someone with you to hear our youth service in Jesus' name. Join the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ for our Lift Him Up Fellowship, which will take place at the Greater Refuge Temple that's right here on Friday, May the 26th at 7 p.m. And the speaker will be Bishop Lambert Gates Sr. That's Friday, May the 26th. Plan to be at the Greater Refuge Temple at 7 p.m. for the Lift Him Up Fellowship. Saints are coming from across the country to, to fellowship in that great, great service. So please plan to be there. The Greater Refuge Temple Youth Department presents Swing Into Summer with their annual Dorney Park trip, which will take place on Saturday, June the 24th. To secure a seat, please see a youth council representative in the back of the sanctuary for following morning worship today so that you can be a part of that Dorney Park trip. There's going to be a non-refundable deposit of $25 to, to secure your seat. All tickets will be $75. The Greater Refuge Temple security team has set up a table with the items from the lost and found container in the, in the social hall. If you have been here and you have lost an item, please go downstairs in the social hall directly following the benediction so that you may claim your missing item. We announce with sorrow the passing of Michelle Aiken. And the funeral services for Michelle Aiken is going to be on tomorrow. That's tomorrow, Monday, May the 15th. With the viewing from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And the service following right after at 10 a.m. We ask that prayers will be sent, will, will, will be kept and we will continue to keep the families in our prayers. We also announce with sorrow the passing of Sister Olive McGee. No funeral arrangements are available at this time, so we ask you please to keep the family in your prayers. Please govern yourselves accordingly and let us participate and take care of the, the activities here at the Greater Refuge Temple. Before I take my seat, let's give God another praise. One more praise. Let's give God a praise. No, that was because I said so, but let's just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank God for the offering. Thank God for the announcements. And we will comply and be in accordance in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name. time we will call on our praise team and after the praise team we will have our inspirational message from our pastor Bishop Charles Wright praise team continue to take us higher
Thank you, praise team. You put it all in his hands. This and that. Uh, whether great or whether small, he's the master of them all, right? I know the mothers know what I'm talking about. Standing before a group of mothers who have been a blessing to the church. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Have been a blessing to the church down through the years. From the beginning of its existence and a part of its existence. Holding up the hands of uh, the leadership of the church. And we thank God for, to, for the mothers. Uh, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the women of our church. And those who are visiting. We say praise the Lord and thank God for you. Thank God for your faithfulness and support of the work of the Lord here at Greater Refuge Temple. We wouldn't be where we are if it were not for the faithful women of our church. We salute you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can applaud yourself. I thank God for my godly mother, whom the Lord called home to be with him some years ago. Thank God she was a saved uh, woman of God. Mother of uh, eight children. I'm the third of uh, eight. Six boys, and she wanted a girl. That's why it took so long. And then when she got a girl, she wanted somebody to play with her. So my baby sister, Glorious Jean, as they called her, uh, making the eighth child. Thank God for her. And for all of uh, the sisters in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we thank God for our missionary department led by our president, Missionary Janice Johnson, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the fine work she's doing. And we thank God for the missionaries, how they're working with her. After the long leadership of Mother Dorothy Anderson as missionary president for so many years, it was a tough decision to make and also choosing a younger woman than Mother Anderson. It was uh, kind of scary also. Women are faithful, but there can be problems at times, and I thank God it hasn't been like that because of the, because of the grace of God and the leadership of uh, Missionary Johnson and all of the women who are holding up her hands in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the period that she's been president. And we look forward to greater, th greater things in the name of Jesus Christ coming through our missionary department. I want to speak with you for a little while today from the Word of God as found in the Second Timothy chapter 1. The first chapter of the book of... Uh, Second Timothy, and we'll read the first eight verses, and by the help of the Lord, we will speak from that part of the Word of God, Second Timothy chapter 1, and starting at verse 1, uh, the Word of the Lord reads on this wise, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And verse 2, to Timothy, my dearly beloved and my dearly beloved son, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve 
from my forebears with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. That wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. These are the words of the apostle Paul, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you one more time. We ask your blessings upon us. Lord, as we stand in your presence on this Mother's Day, this lovely Mother's Day you've given to us, and with all of the mothers and the women of God, bless us now. Speak peace to our hearts and minds, courage and faith in the midst of a troubled generation. Bless us. Bless us. Make us a blessing. We will praise your name and we will magnify your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I want to use the subject this morning on this Mother's Day. The impact of a godly mother. The impact of a godly mother. As we look at these words, the historical context of our message will take us back to around the year 68 AD. Take us back to Rome, the imperial capital of the empire, and the place of this would be in a Roman jail. In a Roman jail, and the one who's writing, he names himself, he is Paul the Apostle. Writing from a Roman jail, not because he had done anything wrong, but because of the cruelty of the time. And Nero, one of the worst emperors that ever sat upon the throne, had him imprisoned. And so many more of the people of God were imprisoned because of the cruelty of Nero. And Paul at this time in a cold Roman jail waiting a word regarding his uh, execution. He was a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ. The apostle to the Gentiles who had suffered more than one time imprisonment prior to this. But now he is there in this Roman jail waiting word. As he would say in the fourth chapter of uh, this same epistle regarding himself, as he charges Timothy to preach the word, to be instant in season, to be out of season, out of season also. Preach it when uh, you feel like it, when they feel like it, when they don't feel like it, still preach it. Don't let the times in which you live determine your witness and testimony for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Paul is writing to his son in the gospel, Timothy, a young man, who has been faithful in his service to Paul, the apostle, 
and faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He wrote unto him, and when you look at the historical circumstances, the times in which we are looking at, uh, Timothy, as I said, was a young man called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But also, we notice something else about Timothy that's outstanding. His family and the impact that they had upon his life. We, we, we go to the book of Acts, chapter 14, for some of the background material regarding uh, Timothy's young life. And how he got to be where he is. Uh, it is also intimated in the, the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 that we read. But here in the 14th chapter of Acts, we have the first mentions about him and all his family. As Paul was on his first missionary journey, traveling there through Asia Minor, and ministering by the help of the Lord on the first missionary journey. He traveled a couple of thousand miles or so on the first journey and a few more maybe on the second journey. And then on his final journey, the Apostle Paul took his trip all the way to Rome, the imperial capital. He wanted to go there. God had told him when he called him, you're going to witness before kings. And you're going to witness also for me there in Rome. God didn't tell Paul how he was going to get to Rome. Uh, you know, we plan trips, we plan cruises, we plan all kinds of European uh, trips also. Uh, but here the apostle of God called to be the primary one who would lead the charge into the Gentile world for God Almighty. is told that he would go to Rome, but call. Paul didn't know he was going to Rome on a cargo ship. Going there, traveling with others, there were about 276, as I remember, people on the ship with him at this time. And they headed for Rome. Many prisoners also along with Paul the Apostle as they traveled towards Rome. But before that time, before we get to where we are now, looking at the background, as I said, and very importantly, um, three people that are the primary focus of what we're talking about here today. We have Lois, we have Eunice, and we have Timothy. Uh, and in this, we are lifting up and highlighting the importance of the women in their contribution to the work of the Lord. As the apostle will say, on the 14th journey, 14th chapter, his first missionary journey, he travels through Asia Minor, what would be modern Turkey now, as he travels preaching the word of God to men and women. And it is possible that on the first missionary journey, chapter 14, we'll talk about that, that Paul met and or the grandmother of Timothy met Paul, and under his ministry she was saved. The uh, Bible doesn't say specifically, but she was saved. And not only was uh, she saved, Lois, but her daughter Eunice received the Holy Spirit. And they saw the hand of the Lord upon the Apostle Paul. Because at that time, there was a man who was a cripple in his feet, had never walked in his lifetime. And as Paul preached the word of God there in the area of Lystra and Derby, cities of Lycaonia, and he preached unto the region and areas around about. And there was a man at Lystra specifically that was impotent in his feet. Chapter 14. In verse 8, and uh, when he heard uh, Paul the apostle preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul looking upon him, Paul seeing by the insight of the Holy Spirit that this man had faith, 
spoke the word of God unto him, said with a loud voice, stand up right on your feet. And he leaped and he walked. Just like the miracle there in the third chapter of the book of Acts, God worked and healed that impotent man, hallelujah. A man who had never walked in his life leaped up and walked. And when the people saw what was happening there, uh, they became happy, they were glad. And they said unto them, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. This is the word of the people, Gentiles, who didn't know any better. But they saw a miraculous event take place. A man who'd never walked in his life was healed instantly when the man of God spoke unto him, hallelujah, told him, rise up. And he walked immediately. And at this time, on the first missionary journey, Barnabas was traveling with the uh, Apostle Paul. And they called uh, Barnabas Jupiter. And they called Paul Mercurius. Uh, these are uh, the planets that they're naming them afterwards. They worship the planets and things like that and all the other kinds of uh, things. And then the chief priest of Jupiter, that pagan religion, uh, they started getting things together to do sacrifice in honor of Paul and Barnabas. And Paul, in true fashion, told them, stop. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he rebuked them and said, this is what we're trying to turn you away from right now. Pagan worship, calling you to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, God of heaven and earth, and by whose name and by whose power this man is whole today. Hallelujah. So Paul was able to stop them from doing sacrifice unto him and Barnabas. Then there came some Jews, hallelujah, into the area. And they convinced the people to stone Paul. Paul was stoned after doing work like that, after the Lord had used him. You know, being a child of God doesn't mean you're going to uh, go tiptoeing through the tulips. I think the mothers know what I'm talking about. Uh, and Paul said, through much tribulation, we're going to enter into the kingdom of God. Paul was stoned. What an awful way to be punished. Picking up stones and hurling it towards him and hitting him. And they thought Paul had been killed. They left him alone. They're in a heap. Bloody mass on the ground. And Paul, by the help of the Lord, started stirring after a while. And they saw him and they picked him up and they took him outside of the city. He had been stoned for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Witnessing, stirred up by the Jews who didn't like the message, who were still worshippers according to Judaism. And then Paul went on into the next town and continued the ministry there probably was Timothy standing by as a young man unsaved. And his uh, mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois might have been there also. Such a big attraction. Man of God coming and preaching the word of God unto us. And the impact of the dedication of Paul, I'm sure, penetrated deeply. And uh, Lois probably was uh, saved first. And then also her daughter, Eunice. And it seemed like Paul probably was not saved on this first missionary journey. They went on like this. But it wasn't long before they had gotten back to Antioch in Syria. And there shared the testimony and uh, the grace of God and the blessings of God to the people of God as they travel throughout Asia Minor. And Paul said, let us go back, he and Barnabas, and visit our brethren that we uh, met on our first missionary journey. And as he traveled through the same route, leaving uh, their Antioch in Syria and the church there, they went back northwestward towards Asia Minor. And they came, as it is said, in the book of Acts chapter 16. Then came he to Derby, and to Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there who was named Hamotheus. That's Timothy. 
Timothy was the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, and believed, but his father was a Greek. That's unusual for Jewish homes. You have a mixed marriage. You, you have a father who is a Greek, who is a Gentile, and his wife is Jewish. And then Timothy, the young man that's born to this mixed marriage, hallelujah, the, the father's name is not given. Uh, nothing else that I know of is said about the father. I don't know, but you know, Timothy seemed to be an impressionable young man. He was one who probably witnessed, as I said, the stoning of Paul in Lystra earlier on the previous missionary journey. Then after that, uh, the, the salvation of uh, Lois and then Eunice also. He listened to his grandmother, as Paul says in the second chapter, the uh, first chapter of the second Timothy, that Timothy was one, hallelujah, as Paul said, when I called to remember your unfeigned faith. He was a dedicated, consecrated one whose faith was true and he loved God Almighty. And the faith that you have, it was first in your grandmother, Lois, and then in your mother, Eunice. Paul said, I'm persuaded you had the same faith also. The impact of a godly mother makes a lot of difference in the world. All the difference in the world. Chances are all of us heard it from our mothers first. Uh, dad is the head of the house, but the daddy doesn't usually begin the Christian education. It's the mother's. Let me well tell the truth. You're getting mighty quiet on me. Yeah, I'm a daddy, so I'm not saying anything. But uh, God blessed Lois to be saved first. Then Eunice got saved. And, and you notice that Eunice, the mother of uh, Timothy, was a woman who was, seemed to be close to her mother. Lois, right? Listened with her mother as her mother taught her son, that is, uh, Timothy. And one thing you'll notice also, there was no generation gap there, right? You had Eunice close to her mother, Lois, and together, along with her mother, she taught her son, Timothy. I don't know what was happening. I don't know if the father was around or not. But we have the education process started by the grandmother. Thank God for grandmothers. Thank God for grandmothers. You know how it is sometimes when whatever goes wrong, if there was something wrong, that Eunice... Had him out of wedlock, I don't know. But it doesn't mention the father beyond he's the father. But the grandmother stepped in. How many grandmothers have stepped in and helped their daughters? Thank God for grandmothers. Thank God for the women. Stepped right in. Helped her daughter. Seems like raised her child, Timothy. And Timothy listening to Hallelujah. His mother and his grandmother became a child of God, became saved. And when Paul started his second missionary journey, Timothy was there in Lystra. And Timothy was a young man at the time, a very young man, but saved. Might have seen this tremendous miracle that was wrought there in the area of Lystra and the healing of this lame man. What an impact it would have had upon Timothy. But not only that. Uh, when the man was healed, the miracle was wrought. The stoning of Paul by the Jews. What an impact that might have had on Timothy. Uh, but here he was saved and following the ministry of the apostle Paul. And the Lord was blessing him. And Timothy had at this time at a young age a very good reputation. The people of the city in the 16th chapter of Acts talk about it. They spoke well of Timothy and the work that he was doing. That he, at a very young age, would 
go on the second missionary journey with, with Paul the Apostle. And Paul, when he writes to him in the second uh, Timothy chapter 1, and he told him, Hallelujah, don't be afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, power, and a sound mind. That might have been said because Timothy might have witnessed that stoning of Paul. And here you are, uh, a man of God, though a young man, and about to enter into the ministry. The impact of that event is enough, hallelujah, to make anyone think twice. And not only that, beyond the stoning of Paul, Paul is in prison now, awaiting execution. Paul thought about Timothy, he said, when I look back upon your life, and I see you as a young man, hallelujah, one who had been blessed of God, and he was one who was like a special envoy for the apostle Paul. Timothy would go to various places and take care of ministries with Paul, hallelujah, and he had been very, very valuable to him in the ministry. He said, when I call the remembrance, your unfeigned faith, that in thee, that was in thee. You know, it's one thing to have faith, but some people have faith that's sort of a Lord. Faith is not real and true and deep. But Timothy was a man with true faith in God Almighty. And notice again, I repeat, some repeating today for the emphasis because of the day. It was because of his grandmother, Lois. And his mother, Eunice, that he was who he was. The impact of a godly mother. It's all over the church today. I remember my mother. She was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember her and the impact that she had upon my life. I remember when I was a young boy, she would take one of us to church with her. And we used to go to that church, I don't remember the name of it. It was an unpainted church down in Orangeburg, South Carolina, like many of the churches you came from. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and I remember uh, when the deacon would be preaching and they had a light bulb right over the lectern like this in that unpainted church. And uh, when the spirit got to move and they got happy, and they started shouting. Hallelujah. Oh, what a good time they had in that church in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And you know how it is when you got a church that didn't have, they didn't have a stone floor and carpet on the floor like we have here. And when you have a wood floor, it moves a little bit, doesn't it? Some of you came from the clay hills of South Carolina and North Carolina and the Caribbean. Don't sit there like you don't know anything about what I'm talking about. Thank you, ma'am. And the dust starts coming up. Hallelujah. What a good time they had. I remember that. The impact of that upon my mind is still there. Mom and the rest of them had a good time in that church. Saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Here he was in the ministry of Timothy. He is written to by his father in the gospel. Paul might have taken a special notice of him. Because maybe his father was not around and, 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 and he was close to Paul. And there have been some young boys like that also who, without a father, they draw closer to the leader and, 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 and the fellowship and the strength that they found in that relationship. But Timothy was a good one because of God's blessing upon him through the faith of his mothers, through the guidance of his mother, hallelujah, and his grandmother. Paul said to him, I want to put you in remembrance. I want you to stir up the gift of God that's in you. He told Timothy, don't be afraid. I know you've got what it takes. Hallelujah. You got it from your grandmother. And your grandmother gave it to your mother Eunice. And she gave it to you. Put you in remembrance. Remember where you came from. Don't ever forget your roots. Hallelujah. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Don't be fearful. You've, you've seen in me how I walked with the Lord. You've seen how I was stoned, hallelujah, and thought to be dead from stoning. And I'm sure Paul at this time in writing to, to uh, Timothy, 
uh, might have had some uh, visible signs of the stonings that he had. He had more than one stoning. And he also was shipwrecked, hallelujah, more than one time. It was a hard ministry for Paul. And he wanted to avoid Timothy being overcome with memories. He said, I remember you. And the job is tough, hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Let no man, hallelujah, stop you from doing the work of the Lord. And as Paul talked to him, he said to him, you've got what it takes. Uh, you've got faith from your grandmother and through your mother and in you. And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Power God's given us. Whatever the task you might have, hallelujah, as a child of God, uh, you, can, you, can, you can make it, hallelujah. You are going to make it. Don't let anyone cause you, hallelujah, to turn around. Don't let any memories stop you from doing the will of God, hallelujah, no matter what they were. As God brought Paul through all of these things, hallelujah, God will bring you through also in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Be an, an example. And remember, hallelujah, those of you who are here today and those who are watching me, if you haven't talked to mother yet, what are you waiting on? Give her a call. Tell her thank you. And if you haven't blessed her yet, bless her. Because your mother has been so, meant so much to you, has brought you through. Hallelujah, as uh, Shirley would sing that song, the nine months that I carried you, cared for you. Hallelujah. No charge. Mothers did it free. Hallelujah. Thank God the impact of a mother uh, uh, upon the life of a child of God. They are invaluable to us as a child of God, as a human being. And not only that, beyond that, sometimes mothers have come to jail to pick some of us up. Yeah, you know that's true. Mother's love does not end. Uh, the fathers might uh, feel differently, but the mothers just don't stop loving. They remember when they brought this child into the world uh, and the hopes and the dreams they had for that child. Here it is in the case of Timothy, Paul, his, his spiritual father, his father in the gospel, is writing unto him to encourage him. I want you to not be afraid, Timothy. I want you to stand up as a child of God. I want you to preach the word of God, hallelujah, to men and women, hallelujah, that you meet. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Uh, reprove and rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. That's a difficult task. Preaching to an unbelieving world, hallelujah, and there are so many men today when they remember what the mother said, how the mother embraced them, how the mother encouraged them, how the mother taught them. They are what they are today, and they face the world as a stronger man because of what mother did for them in their lives. Not only was it a matter of a chain reaction started by Lois and from Eunice and to Timothy, but now Timothy is writing unto others after Paul has charged him that they should stand fast as a child of God. You don't know where the faith of mother is going to go ultimately, hallelujah. So mothers, don't give up on your children. Don't give up on them. Sometimes you look at them, you will knucklehead you, but that's your knucklehead. <laughs> You're not responsible for some of the things that they're doing, but you are the one whose words will ring in their ears wherever they are. It's just like George Floyd. When the cop was kneeling on his neck, he called upon his mother. The love of a mother, the impact of a mother on a big guy, a grown man. He called for mama, and there was one other who also was in some trouble. But the word that came to his mouth was mama. I thank God again for my mother and the blessing that she was to me. Her faith, her teaching. And her guidance. And I thank God for the chastisement by my mother also. I thank her now. I didn't thank her then. Uh, you know, uh, I remember 
Another incident when I was young, down in Orangeburg, South Carolina, we were running one night. We were out after dark. You're supposed to be home at dark. And I wasn't home then. We were in a neighborhood somewhere. And my mother called out, Charles Edward. <laughs> down south, they call you by that middle name, and that was serious time then. <laughs> and I started running through the backyards of uh, houses and and back down then, you know, they had these, uh, these clotheslines. And they were wire clothesline or steel clothesline. But I heard mama calling me. And I had to get home. So I started running through the backyards trying to get home because mama was calling. That distinct voice and with my middle name, it was serious. So I got to one clothesline. You know, that's where they got this clotheslining from, right? It was about this high. And it caught me. And when they catch just you here, your legs go up. And when I came down, I saw stars. Mama called me, and I had to get home. Hallelujah. Thank God for the strict disciplinary and way she raised me. Some t people today, you know, when they look at kids in, in our modern world, they believe that you shouldn't exercise corporal punishment on kids. The Bible says train, train up a child in a way that they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it, right? And not only that, hallelujah. And, and the, the, the Proverbs say also, if you beat him with a rod, you won't kill him, right? I don't believe in, corp uh, in um, punishment, extreme punishment. Brutality. But hallelujah, a certain amount of corporal punishment is needed today with some of these kids. <laughs> it will stop a lot of the crime. It doesn't make sense for crime to be as it is. And, and, and it doesn't make sense for parents to try to um, undo what they thought was bad to them. You know, some parents will say, my parents beat me, and I'm not going to beat my kids. If you don't beat them, the cops will beat them. <laughs> if you don't raise them, institutions will raise them. And even when you do the best you can, sometimes they still don't listen. But the instructions are given in the book of Proverbs, hallelujah, uh, regarding uh, children and how to raise them, hallelujah. Examples of how mothers and fathers shall be as they try to raise their children. And they say, train up a child in the way they will go when they're old, they won't depart from it, right? My son, hear the instructions, verse 8 of chapter 1 of Proverbs. Hear the instructions of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, right? Now, I believe also in chapter 6, they talk similar to uh, fathers and mothers to teach. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it tells them also, train your child. My son, keep thy father's advice. Keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Godly parents are still needed. For the world in which we live in today, I think a whole lot could be turned around if mothers and their daughters together help to raise a child. As they say, I believe it's according to African tradition, it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, we got to somehow or another get over some of these ways that we have today and the um, things that are done that are not helping us a bit because we're trying to become too sophisticated, ignoring wrong. Wrong is still wrong. And I think mothers know about it. And I can see all across the church the impact of mothers and grandmothers upon the people who are here today. They remember their mother and they went to church and they came to church today. If it were not for the mothers, hallelujah, where would we be as a society? Where would we be? And I'm not trying to play curry favor with the mothers. I know it's true. I know practically myself as a son the blessings of my mother 
and what going to church meant. It was more than just watching them shouting in that little church, unpainted church in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Some things stick with you. Some things, hallelujah, stick with you and you cannot forget it. When you look at the mother and the sacrifices your mother made. I can remember the time when my oldest brother, Wayman, he had asthma when he was young. I can remember my mother when he was young, but he was not a little baby then. He was growing up. And my mother would take that big boy and hold him in her lap. Mothers will do things that sometimes daddies don't do. Mothers love with a deep love. Timothy felt it, and that made Timothy more, I believe, uh, responsive to the word of God. First, Paul said, your grandmother taught you, Lois. Then it was your mother who picked it up, Eunice, hallelujah. And she taught you. I know you've got what it takes. You've been taught right. And because you've been taught right, God has blessed you. And I want you to go out. And I want you to minister in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want you to be ashamed, Timothy, of the gospel of Christ. I want you to hold fast to the word of God. Keep that which was given unto you, that good thing. Hallelujah. Blessed you with from your mother and from your grandmother. They blessed you to have the word of God. And you became saved. And in Jewish society, the mothers generally would have the child for the first five years. They would teach them. Daddy would be there, yes, but it was a matter of the mother for the first five years, teaching the child at home. And then beyond that, it was a matter of the father taking him to the synagogue and to the schools of the time where he would learn more. And in the case of Paul, Paul went off when he got to be probably after his bar mitzvah, 12, 13 years old. He went to Jerusalem, went and sat at the feet of Gamaliel, sat at the feet of of the great rabbi and learn. It's because of the impact of a grandmother upon his mother and his mother upon him that he went beyond that. And for 2,000 years, the world has blessed, been blessed tremendously by Timothy's preaching and teaching as a son of the apostle, hallelujah, Paul. Your, I say again, grandmothers and mothers, the impact of your godly example upon the world has gone places that you don't know about. May the Lord bless each and every one of you as you continue your journey and encouraging the younger women. I'm not trying to be hard or anything, but let's get rid of this generation gap. Let's get rid of this generation gap. To some of the younger women, I know mothers and daughters have problems. I know that, you know, but uh, you owe it to your mother who brought you into this world to listen when they talk to you. They will help you. You need to read sometimes with your mother Proverbs 30, right? Which we very often uh, re appeal to on Mother's Day. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, the words of Lemuel, as he remembers his mother and others as they talk to them, and to the fathers, they need to remember some of Proverbs 30, you know, how the Lord blessed, hallelujah, them as a result of a godly woman. He said, hear the words of Lemuel, the words of Lemuel, hallelujah, as he spoke to them, hallelujah, words of King, Proverbs 31, the words of Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, right here again. Lemuel was taught by his mother, right? And the prophecy, the words his mother spoke about him and spoke forth over his life, what my son and what the son of my womb what the son of my vows. He told uh, the women, told uh, their uh, sons, don't give your strength to other women. Don't be a loose living person out in the street there, right? Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good. 
and not evil all the days of her life. Women basically are good. And we thank God for them, right? Uh, and as he, she spoke about this, he said, she's industrious. She seeketh wool and flax, work willingly with her hand. She's like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maiden. She considereth the field and buyeth it. Not only industrious, but she's also a woman who has a good head on her shoulder. I say to you, brothers, when you find a good woman, hold on to her. When you find a good woman, hold on to her. And she's one who uh, uses her head. And she's not on social media all day long. Everybody, you know, she, she's not on social media all day long. She hasn't got the latest thing off of social media to tell you. You know, I think some people like social media so much is because Facebook and other kind of things because you, go, you can look in on someone else's life anonymously, sort of. They can hear, you can hear and see some things, and people do things stupidly sometimes just to get on social media, right? Waste of time. Some of, I'm not saying everything. It's a waste of time. When you can tell me what someone is doing that they shouldn't be doing. When someone wants to put their, their meal and show you what they're cooking. I don't understand it. <laughs> Go ahead and enjoy it. They got the same thing you got. <laughs> Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. And it says in verse 26 of Proverbs 31, she opened her mouth with wisdom. And her, and her tongue is the law of kindness. When you've got a good woman, got a head on her shoulder, industrious, when she knows how to talk, when to talk, and how to encourage, she, verse 27, a lot of claws. She eateth not the bread of idleness, right? Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. So it's not just in the outward appearance. You, you buy, um, or rather, you, I'll leave that alone. Um, beauty is vain, and a woman, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands. Let her works praise her in the gates among the leaders. Thank God for the impact of mothers. The impact of a mother. I thank God again for my mother. Uh, and, and I remember her as that godly woman. I remember the instructions of my father. I remember when I was young, I'd been in the service and I came back home and uh, my daddy said to me, Charles, tell me where are you going when you leave here about dark and you're going in that other direction? Godly instructions. He knew what was over there because he'd been there himself. Listen to your parents. Women are highlighted today because of the blessings of this chapter, as he tells us, Paul is encouraging Timothy and the encouragement of a godfather a spiritual father to Timothy, who was blessed by his mother and his grandmother, resonate with us today as words that we must recapture as a people and draw closer together as a people and get rid of these gaps, generational gaps, they call them. They don't have to exist. There are some good mothers in this church and daughters who are close together. Thank God for them. And we want to build more bridges across the generations. 
Hallelujah. Because you know, there is nothing new under the sun. As the proverb goes, old wine and new bottles, they're just old things being done differently, packaged, repackaged. And people are involving themselves in it like it's the latest thing in the world. No, it's nothing but the trick of the enemy. Hallelujah. Let God bless you. Let God teach you. Let the counsel of God be with you. And remember the impact of a godly mother cannot be duplicated by anyone. God bless you. You make a difference in the life of your children. And again, even our system has realized the blessings of a grandmother, where they even uh, pay them to be uh, home attendants now. And also, they can receive children and provide for them. And so many children are not in the streets because of the impact of their grandmother upon them. When the mother was unable for whatever reason to raise them. It blessed Timothy. Timothy was a blessing to Paul and to thousands upon thousands in the missionary journeys and the ministry he had way back in the first century. God bless you. If there was some young woman here today who's been touched by their mother and grandmother, and you want to say, Mother, I'm going to give my life to God today. We invite you to come to Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Come on down. Come on down to the altar of God. Give your life to him. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It still works. It's still needed. It's still invaluable today. The impact of the life of a mother on a young lady who might have lost her way and to you who are at home watching us you might be sorry about some things call mother and tell mother I love you I thank you and give your life to Christ so mama I'm doing it because you encourage me and I know it's the right thing to do come on be prayed for, be helped, be blessed. Have a good call to give to mother to tell mama I gave my life to the Lord today. If you're here and you want to be saved, come on down. In the name of the Lord. Young man, give back some of what your mother gave you by giving your life to Christ. Be changed by the power of God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You want to be prayed for? Or not so older woman, you may come also, whatever your age might be. Let God bless you. Let the impact of your mother's teachings begin to work in your life. Don't let it go for naught. She taught you tall with you, prayed for you, sat up with you. Mother loves you. And mama told you, when you go to New York, don't get lost up there. Come on, give your life to Christ. Anyone else? You want to stand in proxy for your mother? Prayer for her, for the hand of God upon her. Come on down for prayer.
Come on to Jesus right now. Just now. He will save you. Just now.
Estella Ferguson. Estella Ferguson. Please go to the deacon's room. Estella Ferguson. you. If there's anyone here today that's filled with the Holy Spirit and you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to make Refuge Temple your church home, you may do so. We'll receive you if you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Want Refuge Temple to be your church home?
bless you. Thank you for our fellowship this morning. And remember the impact of a godly mother upon a, a world is tremendous. One mother can make a whole lot of difference. One mother and her mother. Listen to the godly advice of women. It's only going to make you a better person as you grow. And again, if you have not spoken to mother yet, get on the phone, give her a call, apologize. If you can go around there and see if she's in town, and if she's not in town, talk to her, send her a good piece of money. Mama, I love you. Thank you for what you've been to me. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us stand, all of us. Thank you, Mother Wright. That little, little lady over there, she's been with me for 60 years. This year, I remember we, one one uh, funeral director. We, he, that was back around 45 years we've been married. He said, "What? One woman? Same woman? <laughs> it can happen. You can be happy after almost 60 years. Thank God for her." As we lift our hands to the Lord, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us until we meet again through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let all of God's children say amen. amen. You can still take her out to dinner. goodness and your mercy.